Welcome back. Tonight we're talking about what to carry on the bike. Well, I think most people for a long time have carried a small saddle bag like this. They come in a variety of different sizes and have great features. This particular one has a little strap for your light, which is fantastic. But what I don't like about these is number one, people don't fit them correctly. These Velcro straps are made to pull the whole bag up so nothing rattles inside. It is fabulous though, you can get great tool bags for under the saddle. Well, many, many years ago, we used to use a drink bottle to put our tools in a drink bottle. Correct. And then shove a bit of foam in there to stop Correct. things rattling around. And then you use a bottle cage like this. But the bike industry, so you only carry one bottle, one tool can. But lately, there's been another product available on the market that is a keg made by a Specialized. A few manufacturers have them, but the, uh, the Specialized product actually has a little screw cap inside here, and that's to put your glueless patches in, to keep them nice and fresh and keep the adhesive good, and that protects it. What else have we got in there, Dino? We have a sleeve. We've got a, um, a gas bottle, a tube, tyre levers, and a little tool kit which are the fundamental things that we think you should carry inside a tool can. And that also serves as another purpose when it's rolled up and Velcroed. Stops things rattling. We hate rattles. I hate rattles. So that is just a piece of neoprene. It's nice and easy to work with, rolls up and fits back inside there with your tools. In your, in your toolbox, cap on, housed in um, your standard drink bottle holder. Yep, so you'll have two drink bottle holders, one's for your drink bottle, one's for your tool can. On longer rides, you might compromise. But what's in this, we want to be really, really well prepared for most things that happen. And first of all, we've got to divide this into two. Are you either on-road or off-road? Off-road. Because it's more likely things are going to go wrong with your bike when you're off-road. Off-road, correct. Especially gear problems and chains and bits and pieces. So we'll start with the micro tool. Let's look at the tool kits and say, well, you can also get light tool kits. This product here, which is the EMT Mountain Bike Pro, the tool's hollowed out. So the actual tool is quite light, and what we need on a mountain bike tool is some more smaller drivers. We also need a hex key for your disc brake bolts, and we need a chain tool. These are things, you'll hardly ever use the disc brake thing, you'll hardly ever use the Phillips driver, but we do need the small Allen keys and we do need the chain tool because quite often you're going to have a chain problem, especially if you grind through the gear. So, so when you say chain tool, that's actually a chain breaker? Yes. But if you're riding the road, they have a little knockdown version, which is just the, the road bike. And that's got um, some of the same tools. It's got a little star hex drive for disc brake because a lot of road bikes have disc brakes now, a Phillips head driver, and they're hollowed out. And that's a really, really lightweight little tool. Typically, the things you're using this for is to adjust things like seat height, uh, maybe uh, a brake cable tension, yep. uh, maybe gear, rear derailleur cable tension, front derailleur cable tension. I mean, they're, they're unlikely, but it's more likely seat height adjustments. You know, yeah. I need to put my seat height up a mil or down a mil, so that's a... Or we're riding with someone who hasn't been fitted correctly and we want to help them out Correct. a little bit. Everyone who has been riding for a long time knows what a puncture repair kit is. It's a little tube of glue and some patches. And if you've ever used one of those, you'll know that if you use the tube of glue once, then over the next coming weeks, it's gonna dry out, that's the end of it. So you really only need one patch in it anyway. But we like to use glueless patches. And um, inside these glueless patches, the patches are what we put in the cap. So we'll take them out of the container and put them in the cap. Uh, that's got six patches, this particular one, and they, they won't dry out. Correct. So you get six separate incidents. Sort of hassle-free um, hassle patches without yep. the wonderful glue. And another thing we use is we like the gas cartridges, although I'm only showing you one cartridge here, but we would like to have more than one cartridge in case the first one and you get a second puncher or you carry a second pump. But on short rides, one gas cartridge and, uh, and one tube should get you out of trouble. Uh, provided you find the cause of the puncher, you've got to go through the tyre and find out. If you don't know what caused the puncher, then you might put your fresh tube in, empty the cartridge into the tube. And you're and done. It, and it just goes down again. There's another little thing that we're going to give you a tip on here that we don't include in the tool can. You put it on your bike as a valve cap. It's a little valve brass adapter. There are a couple of dollars at bike now. And what that enables you to do is go to a petrol station and just use the Schrader connection just to put some air in your tire. In your tire. Now, 
This has got one of these tyre levers in it, which are good, they're, they're great. But what we're looking for in a tyre lever, a lot of people use multiple tyre levers. We never use tyre levers to put a tyre back on because you just pinch the tube on the way on. We want a really thin tyre lever and we want something very slippery that'll slip on rubber and aluminium, but not sharp enough where it will uh, damage carbon. There's a little tip here. Um, there's two tubes here with specialised the red box is lightweight. So if you're going to keep your bike light, we've just bought a, more, a, a tool that's lighter. Let's buy a tube that's lighter. So we put that's the lightweight. Light, but that's a road tube. You can get a lightweight mountain bike. You can get a lightweight here. mountain bike. It's, they're actually quite interesting for those, uh, for the weight conscious people amongst us. Um, I weighed my mountain bike tubes recently. Mm. The two tubes on the mountain bike are just under 500 grams. Wow. That's half a kilo. Wow. So if you've got a, a tyre system that accommodates tubeless, yeah. there's five, you know, nearly 500 grams of weight. I'm just weight. trying to equate that back to chocolate croissants and glasses of wine. Well, it's almost a, it's almost a, a full drink bottle, a, a full bidden of water. You know, most biddens these days are about well, whatever you're going to put in it. <laughs> Something a bit tastier than <laughs> Something that. Something a bit tastier. But most, most biddens yeah. are about 600 mils, which is 600 grams. Yeah. So there you go. Just incidentally, he has oatmeal for breakfast. I like something a bit more substantial. And he drinks water for, uh, for refreshment, where I like, also like something a bit. But another little tip is when you buy your tube, the valves come in different lengths. But the one thing that we do want to talk about today is this has a, you can get anywhere from a 32 mil valve length up to an 80 mil valve length. We think for a spare tube in your tool can, you should always carry a 60 or an 80 mil valve. And the reason why that is, if you've got an 80 mil valve, you can help anybody. So if you're out on a ride with a group and someone needs a tube, you're the hero with the 80 mil valve that's gonna get them that's out of right. trouble. That's right, never seen a short one yep. work in a long one. No, but it works the other way around. If you've got a long one, it works as a short one. Okay, very good, very, good. Go. very good. Just trying to think of how to make that into humour. Exactly. We'll just leave it at Now that, that leaves us with one last thing to talk about. One of the bike manufacturers who is specialised has developed a newer system again that integrates very nicely into the bike. And it's, uh, this, this system integrates into just above the bottom bracket of the bike. And it's used, like this system here, it's used to carry a gas cylinder, a tube, a lever, the adapter. The adapter on the gas cylinder thing goes in here. It also has a little sleeve or a pocket on this side here which holds a micro tool. So it's fantastic from that perspective. And there's a little clip there where you can put money. So it's a really, really neat way of packaging up all the things you need on your bike in one simple mechanism. And it plugs beautifully in the bike. It's, it's, um, it's basically watertight and it's, um, I've got one on my bike, it's fantastic. But that frees up the drink bottles for well, liquid. E exactly, that's the key point. If you, if you like to drink a lot of fluid or you travel long distances on your bike and you can't refill and you want to have two drink bottles, mm -hmm. obviously that frees up the, the disadvantage of this system is it obviously it occupies one of your, one of your biddens. This doesn't. It's a great, um, I guess it's sort of the future of integrating more things into the bike frame. Incidentally, uh, a lot of the specialised bikes, the mountain bikes, have integrated tool kit up in, above the suspension. Correct. absolutely. Uh, inside the head tube. Uh, where in the top cap there's a little micro tool and uh, so speak to us here at Specialised with the choice of bikes you might be able to find something that you didn't know about about carrying a toolkit on a bike. There you go. Thanks for watching, see you next time.